Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll talk about 12 mistakes which we normally do in our financial lives. So without further delay, let's get started on those. So the first mistake which we normally do is we live on borrowed money. So what I mean by borrowed money here is living on credit cards. That's one of the biggest detrimental thing on your financial lives. Uh, your credit card normally charges about 25% of interest rate. And if you happen to lose one of your uh, payment cycle, you, you end up paying hefty charges on them. There's a lot of surcharge, there's a lot of service costs and a lot of things uh, involved in it. So never ever get uh, or like uh, miss your credit card payments or try avoiding your credit card payments or your uh, credit cards as a whole. So try or avoid living with your borrowed money. That's the most important or the very first thing which you need to do on your financial planning. Uh, the next point I would say here is like uh, spending so much on your household things. What I mean by household here things is like about uh, spending on uh, luxury and lavish items on your house say for example you are uh, in your normal homes and you have an uh, appraisal or a growth in your firm and you try to normally show off to your friends you buy a tv which is like worth eight uh, eight lakhs or ten lakhs of tv and try to go for an 8k television when the broadcast normally uh, which we get in our indian homes is uh, a full hd or a 4k that's the maximum we get but we tend to buy a, a 8k television and because just because we've got an appraisal in a career so that's one of the things which we do. We try to even buy sofas which are like uh, 10 lakhs of worth or like 20 lakhs of budget. So try spending so much on your household expenses because all these are going to be like uh, uh, destroyed over a period of time or it is going to be outdated as technology grows on. The third point which I would say is like uh, not investing or not planning for your retirement. So that's a very biggest mistake which we normally Indians tend to do. So always have planned for your investments or your future. That's very important thing or a crucial thing which we do. So if you are employed in a company, then your NPS or APF will take care of those things. But if you are a self-employed person or if you are a business owner, then you need to plan for your uh, retirement as well. Then the fourth important point I would say here is about uh, people in their mid twenties. Uh, if you have an investment plan which you have just started or if you are with your SAP kind of an investment strategy, never stop those SAPs. So SAP investments are really important that helps you to break your markets ups and downs. So every month with all dedication, try going, going ahead with your investments. Don't stop them at any circumstance. Say for example, if someone claims that this stock is going to go, this is going to skyrocket, don't cancel your SAPs and invest that money into this one. Always keep your SAP separate. That has to go automatically so that it gets automatically averaged out. So we call that as a rupee cost averaging. So that automatically happens and so that your money gets compounded. So never ever stop your SAPs. The fifth point which I would say is about uh, idling your money. So idling is money which we normally do. So we all of us know that savings accounts have only an interest rate of 6%. But when you have a surplus of 2 to 3 lakhs of cash, this cash is something which is uh, besides your emergency fund. We always must have an emergency corpus. Besides that, if you are trying to keep uh, money in your SB account, that's the biggest mistake which we normally do. So that is something which has to be avoided. Always uh, keep uh, these money into your uh, saving channels. Say for example, a mutual fund or your uh, equity or something, or at least an index fund that will at least help you grow with a 12% of interest. Never keep your funds in your savings account. That's one of the biggest mistake which we do. The sixth point, what I would say is about uh, the emergency funds. So emergency funds are very much ident uh, essential for everyone. We should always maintain an emergency funds at least about like one or two lakhs because we never know when emergencies occur. So overnight we could be like hospitalized or someone is met with an accident or something could happen in our lives. So we should always have an emergency fund in hand. We can't break our SAPs or we can't sell our equities and come for emergency situations. So always have an emergency fund that could like help you with rolling up your uh, day to day routines without breaking up your investments. The next one which I would say is about seventh one I would say is about uh, Tracking your cash flow, so everyone, be it a boy or a girl, a woman or a man, everyone should keep a track of their cash flows. So you should know the X amount of money that's coming into your account and how much is being spent on your investment, how much is spent on your needs, how much is spent towards your family or your pension or your future or whatever it is. So you should always have a cash flow. You should know like where exactly is money is being spent on. If you don't have uh, any such calculating systems, at least try to use an Excel sheet and try to like chart down all of these values. So that you get to know at the end of the year, you would be able to see where your money actually went, where you have spent so much of your uh, money. So this is like very important thing you need to like have in your mind when you are like starting up your investment journey. 
Then the uh, seventh point I would say is uh, about uh, lack of a financial plan. So uh, you are getting a salary and you don't know where to invest this money or like you don't know where to compound that. That is one of the biggest mistakes we do. So these days everyone like advises you to go with a savings account, traditional way of saving. But that is something which doesn't even beat your inflation. So try to go with alternative methods. Say for example, you can go with your gold investing or you can go with your NPF or your PPF or there are other channels. So the final channel I would say is like mutual fund investing or you can directly buy equities. So that would be one of your uh, way to compound your money. So that's one of the financial planning which we must do. That is also something to be taken care of because this fund should always be into be like diversified accounts. You should keep like at least 40% uh, of your fund into equity. The 20% should be kept in your debt funds. The remaining 10% into your gold and bonds. The remaining 10% in your SB account. Things like that. So always have your funds diversified and keep them always uh, safe. The point number eight, which we normally do, we try to buy gold as ornaments. Never buy gold as an ornament. That's one of the biggest financial mistakes which we do because you try to spend a lot of investment or money on that. Besides that, there's going to be a lot of service charge. There's not going to be a making charge. There are a lot of things which are going to be incurred on that. Instead, you can do or the best way I would recommend you is uh, buying in SGBs. SDBs are nothing but the government backed up sovereign gold bonds. So these gold bonds gives you a return as the gold inflation increases or the price of gold increases. This gets automatically added up to the price of the uh, gold. Besides that, that's a 2.5% of interest rate which has been given by the government every year. So that's automatically get compounded to over a period of seven years of time. The only drawback here is that it's got like a seven years of uh, wait time or a lock-in period. So, but that's a good thing as well because you're getting 2.5% every year besides the appreciation in the gold's value as well. Then the uh, ninth point I would say is like uh, mixing up between uh, assets and liabilities. We always uh, think of uh, buying a car is like an asset like okay, I've come to an age in life where I can buy a car for my family or I can buy a, a big home theater or I can set up something in my home. So buying a car is never an asset. It's always going to be a liability. You're going to spend a lot of money in your fuel. You're going to spend a lot of charge as, towards your maintenance of the car, also in your service of the cars and stuff. So never buy a car. Also, even if at all you're buying a car, try to like spend something which is like uh, lesser in the bracket. Never try to spend something which is over and beyond your budget. Normally try people, what they do is like when they're getting up a salary of like two lakhs or three lakhs, they normally try ending up buying a Mercedes or a BMWs. Never go into those mistakes. Always buy something which is like easier on the go. Because the minute the car is out of the showroom, out of your uh, purchase date, you have a 15% of depreciation automatically levied on that. That's the biggest financial mistake which we do. So always try avoiding those. And that's always uh, one of the uh, biggest mistakes which we Indians do. We have this mentality of showing off. So never try buying showing off uh, things or like ostentatious things in your life. Buying up a, watch, a fancy watch or buying a Gucci shoe. Never buy doing that. And uh, the next one, which I would say the point number 10 is like about uh, lack of patience in the market. That's the biggest mistake which we all have. Say, for example, you have invested in, uh, say, for example, a stock X and it's slowly up increasing. Every annum, it's increasing by 10 to 12 percent. CAGR. And suddenly some of your friend comes and tell that, yeah, try investing on this platform, which is going to give you 30 percent next week. It's going to give you like 20 percent overnight. So never we normally end up breaking this and invest that funds into this. The minute we buy, automatically the market is going to drop down or something is going to happen in the market. So never ever do all of these. Have patience, take a lot of time in stock picking, research about your stock, analyze it in a better way. And once you're done with that, try sticking onto that. That's the very crucial thing on the stock market. Patience is the key here. Again, I repeat, patience is the key here. Stock market pays only those who are like really good or who are like patients in the market. So. Always hold patience. That's the most important thing or the winning strategy of stock market. Then the 11th point I would say is about uh, lifestyle inflation. We saw this point earlier as well. Say for example, you get com um, promoted from a sales manager to a country head. Your salary is doubling up automatically from 2L to 4L. What we normally tend to do is, as I said, we buy a BMW, we go to a big penthouse and stuff. Never do that mistake. Try to save this extra 2 lakhs of coppers into your investment. This money would get automatically compounded over the next 10 years. This 2 lakhs will automatically give you a huge return in the next 10 years. So never go with your inflation. So whenever there is an inflation in your uh, lifestyle, in your uh, salary, don't show it on your lifestyle. Always try to keep them cool and try to like stay with wherever you are. I'm not saying you that you shouldn't spend on your uh, basic needs. That's very essential for everyone. 
There's also something called as passion spends, which everyone must do. Besides that, don't try to go with extra vagantial in your life. Don't try to go with like so much uh, uh, into your life where you have to show up to someone else and like uh, don't live for others. That's as simple as that. Try to live for yourself. I'm not asking you to be frugal. Just try to live for yourself. That's it. So the 12th point which I would like to bring to your notice here is about the buying a home. This is one of the biggest mistakes which we normally do. Uh, if you want, I'll create in fact another video on this specific point alone. This is about buying a home. So everyone asks me a question like is buying a home a wiser thing or like living in an apartment or in a rented house. That's a huge topic by itself. There's something called as a personal, uh, we as Indians we always have this mentality that we should have a house of our own. That's very much valid but not in your 20s. 20 is an age for you to experiment things in life, to earn or to find out more channels to grow up in your life. So buying a house is for something which is in our late 40s. That's what our fathers have been doing, our grandparents have been doing. So try always try making up monies through your 20s. Try finding out alternate ways of compounding them. I'm not asking you to invest into like uh, risky things like a crypto market or into like uh, overnight trading or FNO. What I'm saying is about try investing in stock market which gives you 20-12% of CAGR every year or go into mutual funds which gives you 20% CAGR at least and try compounding this for the next 20 years. The minute you start saving from your age 20 to 40, this 20 years of span would automatically get compounded over crores and crores of rupees. That will give you the enough channel or the enough cash to buy the same apartment as a hot cash rather than buying it up in loan. So that's one of the biggest financial mistakes which we do. So these are the 12 points which we saw here about the financial mistakes which we all do in our life. And if at all you have any other mistakes, do leave them in the comments and uh, I'll catch you up on the next one. So if you like this video, do share it with your friends and smack that like button. Thank you for watching.